okay, in order to solve the problem, uh, we're going to have to find some F values here, F A and F B. We were given the K values, so that's, that's all set, but we need Fs. And in order to find Fs, we know we need epsilons over Ds, and we're also going to need Reynolds numbers at some point. Um, but anyway, we need the epsilon over Ds. So epsilon A over DA uh, comes out to be 3.33 times 10 to the minus fifth. And epsilon B over DB comes out to be 5 times 10 to the minus fifth. So those are our epsilon over D values. Um, so we can go ahead and try to guess an F for this. So we'll do that. Notice before we do that, that this pressure difference does not depend on the B flow at all. So this is completely independent of B. This is completely independent of A. So these two guys do not depend on each other. So we can treat these as two completely independent pipe problems and then just add them together at the end. So that's nice. That's going to make this problem a little bit easier than the converse problem that we'll look at after this, where we try to find uh, the pressure drop if we're given the U. And in that case, the pressure drop actually does depend on the fact that there are two pipes. But in this case, they're really separate problems. The, a, the, the pressure at the inlet of A pipe is here. And that just drives flow to the outlet. It doesn't even care that there's a there's a pipe down here. All it knows is there's one pressure here, one pressure here, and there's a pipe in between. So it just you can treat it as a completely independent problem. So basically, we're just solving two pipe flow problems at the same time, um, and then adding them together at the end. And you know how to do this problem. It's a bit of a pain in the butt because you have to guess and check. But on the other hand, it's a process that you know. And is really actually not that hard. All right, so let's go ahead and do it. We're going to guess. We'll start with pipe A. I'm going to guess uh, an F A uh, equal to 0 0.012. That's based on looking at the chart, uh, the Moody diagram, based on this 3.33 times 10 to the minus 5. It seems like you know that's not a terrible guess. Um, and then if I do that, I can solve for U A squared based on uh, you know, that pressure equation. So I get 2 times delta P, which is 40,000 newtons per meter squared, divided by uh, the density, 1,000 kilograms per meter cubed for water, time, divided by also FA, LA over DA plus 1.8, which is just K3 uh, plus K4. So that's what I've solved this equation for UA squared. So that's what I've got here. Um, so, if I plug all that stuff together, I get that UA squared, and start plugging in numbers, I get 80 over 4.33 times FA plus 1.8. So that's my, that's my simplified expression where I plugged in all my numbers for the U as a function of FA. I've guessed that FA equals 0.12, so I'll go ahead and say at FA equals 0.012, I plug that in for my FA right there, and I get an answer for U, U squared. So UA squared is equal to um, 43.2, which means that UA, for that guess, is 6.57 meters per second. So that's my result if I guess F equals 0 0.12. Now I have to check to see if that guess was any good. And the way I check that, as we've said many times at this point, but always use more practice, the way I check that is I go ahead and calculate the Reynolds number based on that velocity. So my Reynolds number based on D is equal to 6.57 meters per second, the velocity that I've now calculated, times 0 0.6 meters, which is the diameter of pipe A, divided by 1 times 10 to the minus 6 meters squared per second, which is the viscosity of water at standard temperature and pressure. That gives me 3.94 times 10 to the fifth as my Reynolds number. I go back to the Moody diagram with this particular Reynolds number. And if I look at the Moody diagram for that Reynolds number, an epsilon A over DA of 3 times 10 to the minus fifth, so that was what I calculated here, 3 times 10 to the minus fifth for that, I find that my guess wasn't terrible, wasn't quite good enough, I would say. It's 0 0.14 is what I'm seeing for a reasonable F for that case. I plug that back in to my UA squared, and I find something interesting and something that I will use for the next calculation. So this is my equation that I found to calculate UA squared with the numbers that I had. And if I do all that, I get 43, because I replace now my FA with 0 0.104 here, and that gives me a UA of 6.56. 
So wait a minute. I had 6.57 with my first FA guess. I have 6.56 with my second FA improved guess. That really didn't freaking matter. So that's interesting. Why does it not matter? Um, I go ahead and use this and I calculate my Reynolds number based on that. Well, of course, it's going to come out to be almost the same thing as I had before because my velocity almost didn't change. So I get 3.94 times 10 to the fifth for my Reynolds number. If I look on the Moody diagram, yes, indeed, 0.14 is just fine. So that's fine, but that's because F is almost not making a difference in this problem. If you look at Y, it's because this term here, it's uh, the L over D times the F, A, this is A and A, uh, plus 1.8. That's the term we're looking at here that's multiplying... Um, Let's see, where was that? I'll show it to you here. It was multiplying the u squared terms. So it was down here, right? So we had u a squared was equal to the pressure difference times 2 divided by the density. And then this grouping with this term that has the f in it and this 1.8 that came from the loss coefficients. Well, that l a over d a term, that, if you plug in the values for that, even with points with f a equals 0.014, this L over DA is equal to a pro times FA. Oh, sorry, I'll write that where you can see it. LA over DA times FA is equal to approximately 0 0.06. 0 0.06 plus 1.8. Of course, it's not 1.8 exactly. It's 1.86. But you can see the 1.8 is highly dominant. This is a very small contribution to this overall problem. So it makes a small difference, but maybe I could have just ignored this term entirely uh, for this flow. But maybe, really the loss coefficients are much more significant than the frictional effects in the pipe because the pipe just isn't very long. Remember, this depends on the length of the pipe. The pipe is only 26 centimeters long. Turns out this FA is low enough that this is really not contributing very much. The big pressure drop comes because the water has to go around these sharp corners, which causes a pretty significant loss going, just turning the corners. So I'm going to take advantage of that in the next one when I try to find uh, the B values, because I, in this case, we really could have just ignored F entirely and gotten an answer that was very, very close to the correct answer. But the answer that we got was that the UA is 6.56 meters per second. Uh, in pipe A.